Hello, one and all, and welcome back to We Just Want One. We're doing a great job of making progress towards that goal, as uh, we have kind of stumbled into an amazing start here in year two. I know we had one last year. We had an amazing start in uh, year one. Uh, that kind of all fell apart, but now we are heading into, I believe, week nine now. Uh with another pretty great start here. The schedule's been pretty easy so far. The only real challenges we've had uh, are the Rams and I think the 49ers. Now, we've had close games outside of that, of course, but uh, most of the teams on our schedule have been pretty bad, including today's opponent, the Minnesota Vikings, uh, who are always bad in this game. I mentioned at the very end of last of the last video that uh, the Vikings, the uh, Broncos, and like the Giants are always terrible in these games. Even though the real life they weren't that bad, <laughs> they're just they're just get done in by the Madden ratings. So it's unfortunate if you're a Vikings fan, but uh, there's probably it's probably be a fun rebuild, honestly. So might have to put a pin in that one. But uh, today we're focused on the Cardinals here, trying to add another win. I think it's our fifth, sixth, seventh straight win potentially today. Uh, as we are uh, rolling through the season so far, so. Last week, we saw some absolutely crazy back and forth between us and our division rival. Uh, we are undefeated in our division so far this year. Uh, we almost lost both games, though, to St. Louis and San Francisco, so narrowly we're, we're escaping here. But uh, a high-scoring affair. Maybe we'll have another one here in Minnesota as we play back-to-back -back weeks in two different domes across the NFL, across the landscape of the NFL. So there you see our division standings. We uh, definitely put a pin uh, or put a damper on St. Louis's uh, efforts so far this season. They have a losing record heading into uh, to this week here, but uh, San Francisco and Seattle are still keeping the pace very much so uh, in our divisional race. So we have to keep winning games at this pace, man. It's crazy that we keep winning at all, <laughs> but we have to win everything just to, just to stay alive in our own division. So even an NFC West division title is not a lock uh, starting off, you know, 6-1, and 7-1. and one. So we got to play focused here now as uh, our opening drive. We're going to float this one out to Michael Coffey, and there's no one around him. There's no one around him. Where's the Minnesota defense? Oh, there it is. And he somehow makes the tackle at the one-yard line. Oh, Michael Coffey, I wanted you to have that touchdown. He had the go-ahead touchdown last week in St. Louis, and I was really hoping that he would get in the end zone on this opening play here. Or excuse me, not the opening play, but in this opening drive. I don't know what happened. We just called the right play, man. This is our new cheat code play, and you'll see me go back to this play a few times this game because Minnesota just would not cover it, man. Or if they did, just, I don't know, Michael Coffey's route just threw him off every single time. It's nuts. But on the very next play, we're going to give it to Thomas Jones, who finds some open room to get into the end zone, and he gives us our first touchdown of the day. So moving much further ahead here into the uh, first quarter, just under two minutes here, and the Vikings are cooking uh, just outside of the red zone, but Dante Culpepper cannot find his man. I believe it's Randy Moss, who he could not locate. So second and ten now for the Vikings. Dante Culpepper is going to send a man in motion here, just under a minute 45 left to go. And they're going to go with a pitch here to Michael Bennett to the outside, but we have that one pretty well covered. Dangerous tackling animation, that's normally what will get you a, a face mask, but uh, we get out of that one. So 39 for the Vikings. What are they going to do? They're going to try and float it to Randy Moss again. And Randy Moss wanted the flag. You see him. He was contested. He wanted that flag, but uh, it, he does not get it. So the Vikings are going to have to send out the kicking unit to try and add three points here. And thankfully for them, they play in a dome. I don't think it stopped them historically uh, in all the kicking woes that they've had. But, I mean, they've mainly been outside, right? Like, I think when it first started, it was back in the 60s and 70s when they played outside. And uh, uh, and then, what, when they played uh, back uh, where Minnesota <laughs> Golden Gophers play, I think they also had the same problem. So, uh, on our next offensive drive, we're going to lob it up again to David Boston, who hauls it in. Uh, but he is not in bounds. So, a third and 11 here. We're going to try and add some more points. Can we do it? Freddie Jones is moving on the outside, but we want Hedgel, who's just ahead of him, who's going to haul that one in and get the first down for us. So, both Freddie and Hedgel, I think, were in good positions to make that play, but uh, uh, I was really trying to thread it through a needle right there. Dangerous pass by Plummer, but it works out. So, first and 10 for our Cardinal offense. They're going to try and punch this in, and we find Michael Coffey, and we get him his touchdown. We get him his touchdown that he deserved earlier in the game. Uh, and thankfully, he gets another one. So we're getting him involved in the offense, which is great, man. That was a huge pickup for us at the bye. You know, we even got uh, some capital out of all those moves. And Michael Coffey again, bro, making some moves. I tried to spin out of the way, but it didn't work as he gets stuffed. And Plummer is injured again. 
Oh, you don't want to see it, man. So bring in Herman Grandma. He hasn't played in a few weeks. He's got to be pretty rusty. But he manages to float that one out to Freddie Jones, who's breaking out towards the sideline. And he hauls that one in. So just a minute left to go here in the first half. Is Plummer okay? He is okay. He's just got a pinch nerve. He's got to, he's got to work it out. You know what I mean? And he'll be back. So I'm not worried. And Grandma's going to float that one out to Michael Coffey. And that time, they are all over that play. The Vikings are. And so we cannot punch that in. So with just 30 seconds left to go in the first half, can Grandma add some points of his own? As we find Boston across the middle, who gets brought down across the marker for another Cardinal first down. So Grandma is not losing a step, I guess. He is still finding ways to lob it up here and get some dime and keep our offense moving here late in this first half as uh, Jake Plummer, uh, I guess, works out his personal issues that he has. <laughs> so Grandma's going to drop back down and roll out here. We're going to try and punch this in as we float it to Hedgel. And there were some da Vikings there that made that throw dangerous, but uh, Herman Grandma was able to find the window and find Kyle Hedgel. So that'll add us another touchdown here as the first half comes to a close and things are looking like a blowout, folks. It's looking like a blowout already. Now, no lead is safe, as you saw. No lead is safe, okay? The Rams stuck up out of nowhere, but we are absolutely handling the Minnesota Vikings right now in the Metrodome in Minneapolis. So they're going to need to bounce back here as McAdley's going to field this kickoff. We even get the ball back, dude. I mean, that is just nuts. So not only are we kind of kicking butt right now, we also start the second half off with the ball. So Jake Plummer is fine. All he needed was halftime to get right and get back. But Thomas Jones is coughing up the football again. And everyone's diving for it, but no one can get it. But then LJ Shelton finds a way to pick up the ball. He scoops it up. And is brought down well behind the line of scrimmage. But thankfully, we just retain the possession here. Uh, but uh, that it will bring up a disastrous 4th and 22. So we're going to try and uh, punt this one away here back to Minnesota. Uh, and they're going to field it. Uh, absolute beauty of a spin move. But hold on. Wait a minute. There's a whole bunch of room here. Kendall can't get him. And there's no one in front. And Scott Player, our, our punter, is going to try. But no, it's not happening. Terry Wright, kick, punt return to the house. 65-yard punt return. I don't know what our special teams is doing there. I mean, it's dangerous when you punt it to the sides like that. It's very dangerous, but I'm not very accurate with kicks. So Minnesota gets themselves a special teams touchdown, just a desperately needed touchdown, as we find Michael Coffey again. And this time he gets tripped up again and stopped at the goal line. Oh, my gosh, man. Hit the hit the weight room. Something, bud. Run, run a mile on the track. Something. You got to get that speed up. He's a low 70-something, I think, like a mid to low 70s. So, yeah, his speed's probably not where it should be. But uh, we are hitting him on those plays <laughs> a lot today, and he just cannot finish because of his speed. So we give up the huge punt return, but it's okay because a few plays later, we find ourselves back in the end zone. Thomas Jones adding another touchdown to his daily total. Uh, that puts him up at two, I believe. So uh, the whooping continues as we are up 28 to 10. But the Vikings are cooking again well on our territory. And Dante Culpepper cannot connect with his man. That seems to be a running theme here. Can't seem to connect with his receivers. They're open, just can't get it to him. So second and 10 now for the Vikings. We are late here in the third quarter. Culpepper's going to hand it off to Bennett, who doesn't have a whole lot of room as our linebacker corrects and makes that tackle. So and there you see the rushing comparison. We have not run the ball at all, but we still do have two rushing touchdowns, which is funny. So third and seven now for the Viking offense. What can Culpepper do to add some points? He's going to look over his options, scan the field, and float that one out to the left side. And that one was well covered by our Cardinal defense. So the Vikings are going to send out the kicking unit yet again. A very awkward pooch kick <laughs> uh, by Brienne. Uh, just a 29-yarder chip shot, uh, and that'll add three points. So the Vikings go into the fourth quarter now down the stretch here, down 28-13. to 13. So I'm, I'm proud of our lead here. I'm not worried about losing this one. But, uh, hey, anything can happen if we start turning the ball over. But Thomas Jones finds some room on the outside, and that should even up the rushing comparison a little bit here. I think it should. <laughs> As we find some open space and get a humongous run play, we haven't had hardly any of those so far this season. Thomas Jones has been relatively quiet. I want to get his production about where it was last year because that's what's going to continue his progression as a player, hopefully towards like a low 80s, which is fine by me. I don't need much better than that as a running back. As you see, we're a mainly pass-heavy team, but that's what we're going to focus on. So he needs to add a little bit more to this offense as Plummer's going to float across to Hedgel, who's got another touchdown. Oh, my goodness, gravy. 
This is just nuts. Our passing game is wild. <laughs> We're going to skip ahead here. We both add a couple of touchdowns, and but this blood is complete. 42-21 to 21 is your final score. Uh, and I'm surprised, man. I'm really proud of the Viking faithful. They stayed for this entire butt whooping. Uh, I couldn't. I wouldn't. I probably would have left after, like, you know, 35, you know, points. But, uh, hey, they got the spirit, and I can't blame them for it. <laughs> Michael Coffey gets player of the game honors with seven catches, almost 200 yards, man. He need one more yard. You know, if he got into the end zone on one of those two big plays, he probably would have his 200 yards. But, hey, that's for him to think about next time when he's in the weight room working out for the next game. <laughs> so, a huge offensive explosion, honestly, for both teams. We still gave up 21 points. I mean, that's a lot. You know, we were never in fear of losing the game, but that's still a lot of points to give up, if you ask me. Uh, we were in the red zone six times, which is just absolutely absurd to me. I think that's got to be a record for the series so far. I mean, maybe the Falcons series was better, uh, unless we were scoring really uh, from outside of the red zone. But uh, Grandma posted a 120 rating, even though he was in and threw, like, what, three pa Yeah, three passes. Crazy. But uh, Plummer still puts up a very, very nice stat line, similar to his stat line from last game. Uh, Thomas Jones ends up with 54 yards and two touchdowns. So he finally got some touchdowns. Michael Coffey leading the receiving core. I mean, you haven't seen that before. And Kyle Hedgel, three receptions, and two of those were touchdowns. I mean, that is the efficiency that I'm talking about with this pass team. That's why I'm not worried about the running backs here. But we still need one. But we have a great receiving core that we are building around, and it is working out well. So LeVar Fisher is leading the team with tackles here with eight, which is pretty cool. You like to see that. Uh, not much mistakes going on here. I think Culpepper mostly played a pretty clean game. So we're moving ahead now with our dominance over the NFC North solidified, at least for this game, until we play another NFC North opponent because we did lose the Lions last year. But uh, we're going to move into one of the tougher games of the year here, uh, a grudge match with the 49ers, who we barely beat uh, in Week 2. So, uh, again, I said it uh, heading into the Rams game. We need all hands on deck here for this game, for this home game with the Niners, as they come to try and usurp our uh, win streak here and even the season series.